We are on the road to Destination X, but I think the bigger question is, where is Sting's final destination going to be? Is he coming back to TNA? Is he coming back to the Impact Zone? Or is he just going to live that lonely, boring, old-ass retirement life? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. And we've got Alex Shelley here. Alex Shelley's got the cameras out. Alex Shelley is spying on Sting. And it's a good job that he's not spying on a female, or else he'd probably be considered a pair. Even though he did get video footage of Jackie Gator doing some questionable shit but yeah Alex Shelley just running around America or Florida wherever Sting lives and he's videotaping him it's a little bit weird but it's probably one of the best things we've got going at the moment on the show it is Steve Borden at home with his family with his wife and kids I'm digging it it's a storyline it's actually good but it's a shame it's probably the best thing we've seen Sting do in years at this point and it's literally just living his normal life it's, it's, it's the only thing we've seen St <laughs> it's the only thing we've seen Sting do in years Anyway, Explosion tapings for anyone that cares. We don't watch Explosion. I don't even know if you can get access to Explosion these days. I don't even know if you could get access to Explosion back then. But The amount of money we put into their pockets, I'd like some Explosion. I, I, I wish my bank account would explode with TNA funding us. TNA! Anyway, uh, people say I always bash TNA and I've rated both shows so far in 2024, 1 out of 10s. Let's see if we can beat a 1 out of 10 here today. Explosion tape and the Naturals and Ron Killens defeated Team Canada, with uh, which com which consisted of Pete Williams, Bobby Roode and A1. Not a bad match for Explosion. No, better than some matches on the main show, and, absolutely. And then it was Alex Skipper and David Young and Simon Diamond. Now, I'm pretty sure this trio have a tag team name and... Diamonds in the rough, is it no? Aye, uh, something like that. Anyway, uh, they defeated Jay Lethal, Shark Boy, and Lance Hoyt, and that just seems like a, an explosion trio, if you ask me. It does, they belong there. Uh, Jay Le Lance Hoyt, not that long ago, well, about four months ago, five months ago, did have a Bound for Glory matchup. And did he? In real sure. life? Yeah, well, no, in this oh, timeline. Oh, 2005 or after you 2023. Did he not take on a bit at Bound for Glory? Oh, I think he did, aye. Well, what's happened to no, him since No, a was in a monster's ball at Bound for Glory. Are you sure? Ah, he was. Of course he was. I don't think he was. Rhino, Sabu, Abiz, Jeff Hardy. Right, who did Lance Hoyt? B -square. Who did Lance Hoyt take on then? Someone of similar stature to those guys. That's for sure. It definitely was. Anyway, I can't remember. Monty who Brown was it? It was Monty Brown. Monty Brown. Brown there you go. go. The alpha male. Anyway, let's move on to the real show. Ah, the real show. Tag where six of the guys are fucking jobbers. Aye, so uh, Shark Boy pulling double duty this week. <laughs> he was on explosion, and he was also used to kick off the show. It was Shark Boy, Norman Smiley. Cassidy Riley and Buck Quartermain. Not even Quartermain or Quarterback. Quartermain. These Buck four mate. couldn't defeat Jeff Jarrett four on one. So why would they why do they think they've got a chance four on four against a biz and America's most wanted? I mean, this is this is the kind of four man tag team I'd expect McMahon just to shit on. Yep. Drop his trunks and just Literally. Uh they were taking on the team of uh Jeff Jarrett, uh Abyss. And America's, America's most, wanted. most Wanted. And that was it. America's Most Wanted. Jeff Jarrett and Abyss got the win. Eight-man tag match. Uh, Jackie Gator obviously came out. Company Jeff Jarrett. She didn't really want to be there, but I guess that's the punishment. TNA's got a habit of doing these matches, like AEW, where you just know who's going to win. I, I know, but some people, at some least people these are... matches last four minutes. True. Probably. I mean, they, they don't go through ten commercial breaks. No, but what's, what's the point of this match? It's just weird. I'd, I don't know, I'd rather a, a set. There's four people on the roster, Dick. We'd see when Norman Smiley is the biggest draw you've got in the other team, and he hasn't been relevant ever. Yeah, but at least he was on Nitro eight years ago at this point. Come on. Anyway, uh, Team Canada came out to celebrate. Alex Shelley came out and delivered a tape with proof that Sting has quit and retired. Eric Young can't believe it. He ends up stealing the tape and, and putting it in his pants. Or that may have been last week, but I think he done it again this week. Who, <laughs> who knows? Uh, we then got an interview with uh, Jeremy Borash. No, he did. So Eric Young puts the tape down his pants. Uh, we got an interview with Borash, Matt Bentley, and Tracy Brooks. Uh, Bentley talks about his heel turn on Explosion. He cuts a promo on Lance Hoyt, so we didn't get to see the heel turn. If you're turning heel on Explosion, are you really turning heel? No, he wasn't even on the card, so I'm assuming he came out and just attacked Lance Hoyt or something. If like a tree that. falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, did it even fall? Jeff Jarrett and his crew are interrupted. They interrupt and they tell uh, Jackie Gator to go and get, prepare the fueling room. Jackie Gator refuses, so Jeff Jarrett then 
passes the tape to Eric Young so he can intimidate Jackie. Jackie at this point has to follow orders. I mean, what are they going for here? Have they, have they got like a Jackie Gator sex tape or something? That's what it seems like. Yeah, it definitely seems something like that. It's not just going to be her retired living at home like the Stinger. Now, that that seems to me that Alex Shelley then was filming Jackie Gator without her permission, doing some weird stuff. Ah, it looks that way. So could Alex Shelley be getting cancelled here? He could be. Hopefully he didn't shite on the lens or something. I Matthew hope not. Uh, uh, for business. But then Jeff Jarrett and his crew go off searching for Eric Young because he stole the tape. They need to get the tape back. Uh, Lance Hoyt defeated Kenny King. Last about two minutes. Big Lance Hoyt getting the big win. Uh, we had Conan, Homicide and Machete uh, at ringside. And BJ James and Kip James were there. Conan came out and says what they did to BJ James is nothing compared to what they did to Bullet Bob. Uh, Homicide and Machete then dragged BJ James out. They triple teamed him. Kip James made the save. Three on two. And uh, Conan and his two goons ran away. So. Yeah, the facial expressions from Mike Tenay were horrendous here. He was t treating it like there was a double murder su suicide at his front door. Speaking of a guy that's been around double murder suicides, Ron the Truth Killens come out with his new music. What's up? Ben Watt over there, what's up? Daniel over there, what's up? I mean, it's crazy how this guy's literally been around the business and not just the wrestling business, he's been around every fucking way. Yeah. I mean, our truth, Ron Killens is pretty much a. A, a journeyman? A made man. He's a celebrity, like, at this point. I mean, no, the guy's been hanging out with Snoop well, Dogg. How close, and how close was he with Fence? Tupac. And Too close? Very close with Fence. I mean, th this guy's been around everywhere, and it's, it's crazy to think that he spent most of his career being an absolute jobber. Anyway, he's got connections, and all we got here was a music video. It got a little bit repetitive after 10 seconds. I think this guy deserves a WWE title in 2011. Yeah, go. he did. He never got it. Uh, Six-man tag. Petey Williams, Bobby Roode and Eric Young with Scott Demore defeated Sanjay Dutt, Chris Sabin and Jay Lethal. A match that could have been on Explosion. Even though, I mean, you've got Team Canada and then you've had Sabin who's been used quite a lot on TNA Impact. It's just another throwaway six-man tag where you know the winner is going to be Team Canada. I mean, Sanjay Dutt, I know they're trying to push him for the Indian shows, but... Come on, man. Mm -hmm. There's not enough Indian shows for Sanjay Dutt to fill it. Yeah, Eric Young came out, and he's still got the videotape, and the videotape's hanging for his trunk, so someone's going to have to reach in and grab something, get a hold of that tape. Uh, interview time, Christian Cage and Abyss. We follow James Mitchell, Monty Brown. Father James Mitchell interrupts Christian's interview, and he says that uh, Cage jumped over Abyss for a title shot. He's not happy, and now Abyss... Wants a title shot, and uh, he says if he didn't agree to the title match, it would be Click Doomsday. Now, I don't really know what he meant by that. Is he going to blow the whole place up? Is, <laughs> is it a suicide fucking uh, bomber? bomb here? Then uh, Monty Brown attacks Christian from behind. They brawl it to the stage. Brown then spears Christian Cage off the stage, and he lands on the guardrail. Uh, Rhino came out to check on Christian Cage while Monty Brown held up the NWA belt. I can see a tag team match coming here play in play the future. Hold on, hold on. Uh, then we had the feuding party with Jeff Jarrett's crew. Jeff Jarrett said it was time. He called Alex Shelley a superstar. They finally got it out of Eric Young's pants. Yeah, they got, I don't know who reached in and grabbed it. Maybe Jeff Jarrett. I, I think Jeff. it was Jeff Jarrett, I remember. Why didn't he make Jackie Gator do it? Maybe he's gay. Maybe he is a little bit gay. Anyway, the tape plays and Alex Shelley's following Sting. I mean, he's videoing Sting while he's with his kids. A wee bit weird there, but I mean, sure, Alex Shelley's got really good intentions. Sting, though, spots the camera and he's got no good intentions at this point. He comes over, confronts Alex Shelley. Alex Shelley shits himself and Sting says, it's going to be showtime at the next pay-per-view because he is coming back. And then the camera slowly pans across the, uh, the facial expressions of everybody that's involved with Jeff Jarrett and Team Canada and they're all shitting themselves and J Jeff Jarrett starts yelling at Alex Shelley and he went from being a superstar to an idiot a moron and this is going to lead to Sting coming back so yeah everyone here it's like 15 guys with a couple of women and everyone's breaking it apart for Jackie Gator I like this segment right but Sting's family's been threatened kind of they've been filmed and he comes over they're, they're portraying this as very real like this is Steve Borden this ain't Sting but yet his family's under threat he comes over and he's like I'm going to turn up at that fake pay-per-view instead of being like I'm going to batter the fuck out of you in this parking lot why are you filming my family it seemed a wee bit weird that way to me. Well, I think he did kind of threaten Alex Shelley. Oh, he did a wee bit, but... I know, but he knows that Alex Shelley's not really behind it. 
Ah, oh, that's alright. I mean, Alex Shelley's the go-to man, the middle man. So hold on, if Alex Shelley kills his family, Sting's gonna be like, ah, it's alright, I'll let you live. Well, hold on here, look at Saw 1. Did the Doctor guy really hold Adam responsible? Or was Adam just some guy that was being paid? Like, he was a wee bit pissed with Adam. Ah, I know, but... come back for him for one. Well, well, that's a wee bit different. But, you know what I mean? In, in the end, like, he... You know what I mean? His real issue wasn't with Adam. Ah, it was the guy on the floor. Aye. Well, they didn't know about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, there he goes. So Sting's coming back. Alex Shelley, lucky to uh, escape. Whereas, I don't want to hold a title. No, what I think would have been great. See, when Sting noticed it, I think it would have been great if Sting just rammed into Alex Shelley's car. TNA but TNA don't have, don't have the budget to just write off two uh, vehicles like that, which is unfortunate. No. But I think that would be good. I know, like, don't have to be blown up Because you've seen, you seen Sting coming towards him in the car. I and I thought that's what they were going to go for. What he's going for is a parking spot. And then he just braked and got out. And I was like, oh, God's sake. I mean, I thought, like, at least, could they not just switch the car and give him a banger? <laughs> but Sting could pretend he's driving his sons. <laughs> hey, my son turned eighteen. I bought him a two hundred dollar car. You know, <laughs> I know. Like I don't know. Fuck me. Or get something for the scrapyard or something. Or I don't know. Come on, put some money into this show. Come on. Uh, I mean, no, but they can break guitars, but they can't break cars. Come on. It's pretty good, right? We got a really good round here. It was all right. Uh, main event time: Samoa Joe and Shannon Moore. Oh, fuck me, why should Joe team up with this guy? Defeated AJ Styles and Daniels. AJ put the X belt up on the wire cables after the match, and Samoa Joe freaked out because it was so high. And at Destination X, he's going to have to climb up there to get his belt back. I'm sick of seeing Daniels, AJ, and Joe. Yeah, it's like the SmackDown Six divided by three, and and Daniels is like Chavo divided by two. Oh, you're right, actually. But Daniels does suck, doesn't he? He is the chavo of this group. AJ Styles says that uh, Christopher Daniels is a legend in indie wrestling. Uh, indie wrestling? <laughs> well, maybe TNA is indie wrestling, right? But <laughs> well, no, well, he said that's a couple of years ago in Austin's podcast. Maybe he's trying to put him over. And Austin's like, ah, oh, that guy. Christ. Well, yeah, this is the guy that could have been the higher power. It was me. Imagine him to... I was me, Austin. Austin doesn't know who he is. Why doesn't McMahon just say Christopher Daniels put him up to shit on people? He's the higher power. Uh, then we go backstage with Jeremy Boras, Jeff Jarrett, Scott DeMore and Gail Kim. Jeff Jarrett's lying on a bench, not quite Big Papa Pump popping out the weights. But Jeff Jarrett is laying there and he says that he's got over the news, he's done stressing out that Steve Borden's thing is coming back. He snaps out of it, and he says he's got a, sol a solution. And he jumps on his speed dial. Could this be actually Big Papa Pump that he's on speed dial to? Because we know he comes back to TNA soon. Who is Jeff Jarrett bringing in here to deal with Sting? I don't think it is Steiner. I think he's more 2007, is he not? Cut angle. Three months early. No, I think it's a Steiner. You think it's a Steiner? I think it's a Steiner. I think, big, I think Big Papa Pump is coming to TNA. What oh, Kevin Nash? Actually, no, His that. quads are done. His quads are done. <laughs> Why would Jeff Jarrett and Kevin Nash be teaming up? They probably want to forget. Brian for Glory and just put it under the carpet, don't they? Yeah, anyway, I mean, the whole fume party thing is, is no bad. I mean, Jeff Jarrett and his crew is oh, oh, acting's a little bit overacting, but... I mean, it was all right. I mean, Alex Shelley video on Sting's no bad. Uh, I mean, we had an R Truth music video. It was okay for what it was. I don't really like Machete. As soon as they get Homicide in there and they start pushing the whole uh, LAX thing, I think it'll be better. And uh, other than that, I mean, just not a lot happened really. No team 3D. Yeah, me and a I, I think TNA is seriously struggling with the matches. I think the segments are more often than not all right. But I think it's just, I think the matches suck. I'm getting a 3 out of 10. 3? That's right. quite harsh, isn't it? I'm getting a wee 4. 4 out of 10. Anyway, guys, there you go. 3.5 out of 10. 2 and 8. Cross the line, buddy. What will we be getting Big Papa Pump next week? I think we might. Or maybe Destination I'm, I'm, I'm X. Down, down, down. Rick Steiner. <laughs> oh, we'll see you next time, guys. Till then. Peace.